Good evening, everyone. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided by sending such notice to the Hadbury Law Press, the Middletown Patch, and the Middletown Township Public School District website. And the posting of such notice at the OST Minor Administrative Offices in each elementary, middle, and secondary school and district. Oh. Mrs. Kennedy? Here. Mrs. Farley? Here. Mr. Fitzgerald? Mr. Heffernan? Here. Mrs. Minnies? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mrs. Wright? Here. Mrs. Tobacco? Here. Mr. Capone? Here. And I need a motion for Matt for executive session for Madison related to hit and personnel. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. See you in a little while. Good evening, everyone. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided by sending such notice to the Asbury Bob Press, the Middletown Patch, the Middletown Township Public School District website, and the posting of such notice at the OST Minor Administrative Offices in each elementary, middle, and secondary school and district. Roll call. Mrs. Kennedy? Here. Mrs. Farley? Here. Mr. Fitzgerald? Here. Mr. Heffernan? Here. Mrs. Minnies? Here. Mr. Tull? Here. Mrs. Ray? Here. Mrs. Tobacco? Here. Here. Miss Allen. Mr. Rowan. Please Strong personal character 
while exemplifying the standard of excellence, excellence that serves as our learning community's foundation. These individuals are issued, issued with praise points, which are medals that celebrate their positive example across the campus. This month's recipients were <coughs> Dylan Sanchez, Leigh Fieldman, Chris Garcia Moreno, Julie Frontera, Adrian Soto, Gianna Arsuprecki, Alice Ogiano, Natalie Trezzo, Alex Owens, and Brianna Soto. The excitement surrounding co curricular activities at Vista One is truly inspiring. This year, several organizations were created due to student leadership and family support. These two clubs include North Stars, Pickleball Club, Board Games Club, Creative Writing, Badminton, Kindness, and Poetry. Our peer leaders organized and facilitated a 3v3 basketball tournament that drew upon the excitement of the NCAA March Madness action. It included a grade level bracket, it included grade level brackets in a competitive championship round. The overall winner was a faculty team consisting of Mr. Calvin, Mr. Crellin, and Mr. Conway. Students from various history courses to the tour Washington, D.C. This trip to our nation's capital included visiting all monuments and memorials along the National Mall of Arlington, Arlington National Cemetery, the Museum of Natural History, the Air and Space Museum, and the Holocaust Museum. It was a profoundly educational and unforgettable experience. Jack Kratz was awarded the Monmouth County's Guidance Directors Association's Karen Award for his noteworthy leadership and community service. Grace Gomez was selected to represent Princeton North at the National Girls and Women in Sports Day celebration for her leadership in the building on athletics teams. Mrs. Beth Lyon was awarded All Show Band Director of the Year. We are genuinely, gra we are genuinely grateful for her positive contributions throughout the school community. The Board Games Club organized a checkers competition. Today, during lunch block for all grades and the top three finishers were in third place, Richie Jabowski. In second place, Avery Maddows. And in first place, James Warner. Mr. Olson is currently, there's also a, currently a Tetris week tournament running during lunch. The participation in the competition so far has thus been outstanding. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you later.
The girls were led to their win by individual divisional wins by the whole break of the 400 hurdles. Abby Michelson in the 400, Rosie Shea in both the mile and two mile, Jen Schuster in the 800, Kaden Sermonera in the pole vault, and Maddie Hussey in the shot put and discus. Congrats, girls, on an amazing start to the competitive season. The high school South community commemorated the GLSEN Day of Silence on April 14th. The Day of Silence is a national student-led demonstration where LGBTQIA plus students and their allies choose to take a vow of silence or make a showing of support in another way to bring awareness to the harmful effects of harassment, intimidation, and bullying of the LGBTQIA plus people worldwide. While we recognize the May 1st marks the official date for Senior Decision Day, we established advanced placement testing and schedule a to theater with our community-wide celebration. To this end, students have been asked to wear post-secondary, college, university, military, or workforce clothing on April 28th. South Junior Prom is scheduled to take place on Friday, April 28th. Looking forward to having a safe and happy celebration. Lastly, South's Copy and Kind Campaign continues to be a huge success, and we've been celebrating staff and students each month for being caught doing an act of kindness. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn the mic over to Mrs. Doherty to present the final 23 24 school year budget. Thank you. We do have a presentation on the final budget that is up on the website. Uh, just to give an overview, uh, we did present the tentative budget at our March meeting. The budget that we are uh, looking to present for adoption tonight is unchanged from the uh, tentative budget with one exception uh, that we will get into when we go through the slides. So I'm just waiting for the
slide illustrates our steady trend of starting from the 9-10 year, the 10-11 year, where we had an initial severe cut to state aid. Uh, state aid at that time went from a little over $20 million down to uh, roughly uh, $12, $13 million. We, had, we did the increases over the following years, uh, but now you can see the line is trending downward due to the S2 legislation where we had state aid use uh, for the past several years. So the supplemental stabilization aid is the change to this budget. Again, we got an allocation that we can apply for. We have uh, the approval to apply for this on this agenda. Uh, the maximum amount we'd be entitled to is $217,769. The district is going to use those funds to preserve two uh, instructional interventionist positions at the high school level that were previously being funded with extra money uh, that has that, that's not being continued, that we've exhausted. Uh, so those will be uh, reinstated back into the budget. And in addition, we are adding an uh, instructional interventions at the elementary school level uh, into the budget for next year. So those three positions, plus the benefits related to them, are what we are using the $217,000 for. This slide shows our reserves. A lot of money reserved, we have a small capital reserve and maintenance reserve uh, to use if we needed to for unbudgeted expenses for capital projects. This details our capital outlay that is planned for next year. Again, these projects are unchanged from what we presented in the tentative budget. We also have a separate budget and tax levy for debt service. Those are the bonds that have been issued by the district uh, through the referendum process. During that process, the community commits to raising uh, enough taxes to pay bond payments each year along with the state aid to get to make those payments. Uh, so our debt service budget for this year totals $6,483,705 uh, being supported uh, by tax levy and state aid. When we take our debt, uh, debt service and general uh, budget tax levy and look at the impact on an average assessed home here in Middletown, uh, that's what this slide presents. So an average value of assessed home here in Middletown uh, for the current year is $592,700. That is an increase over the previous year. Uh, so we're looking at the impact of this proposed budget on our from the operating side uh, being an annual change of $130.12. And on the debt service side, $1.70 for a total increase on an average assessed value home annually of $131.82. We do participate in a number of shared services, some of the township, some of the county. We participate in a variety of purchasing cooperatives and transportation arrangements with other districts to share costs on some of our out-of-district routes. Our budget timeline, we've been actually working on the budget since the early fall. Uh, we get through that whole process and come to the point where the board adopted the tentative budget back in March. Uh, at that time, the budget was submitted to the county office of the New Jersey Department of Education. It was reviewed. Uh, that office approved it. At that point, we were allowed to advertise in the newspaper, which we did, and appeared in the Aspen Park Press on April 14th. And we are here tonight to have our public hearing on our budget and for the board to adopt the final budget for the 23 24 year. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Starry. Now, I'm going to invite forward for any open public comment on the budget and what's the public comment on the budget. Slides at high school. 
No, we're, we're retaining two at the high school that were funded by ESSER funds. We're retaining those in next year's budget, and we're adding an elementary element into Francis' position that was not funded by ESSER funds, but it's being added using the stabilization needs. So it's a total of three positions, two high school, one elementary. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wish to make a comment?
finance, Mrs. Darby. The Finance and Facilities Committee met on April 19th. Uh, we did go over items that are appearing on the agenda in addition to the budget that we just reviewed. Uh, we also, under facilities, uh, the board will be voting on the approval of a permanent construction and utility easement agreement with the County of Mama. This is to facilitate uh, improvements at the intersection of Leonardville and East Road, and it involves a small section of the property at Bayview Elementary School. It will not impact the operations of the school, and it will allow, they were actually going to be rebuilding the sidewalk and putting some curbing in, which would be beneficial to our property. So, uh, there is an agreement to finalize that on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Nassar, our director of facilities, reviewed uh, updated custodial procedures for the committee, uh, including the use of air quality monitoring devices and documentation of conditions found in the school. So uh, we are continuing to evolve uh, those procedures and make them more efficient and effective. Uh, under finance, uh, again, we voted, uh, the board voted on the 23-24 budget. Uh, we also have on the agenda the supplemental stabilization aid application that we talked about when we talked about the budget. The board just has to approve our application for those funds. Uh, we also have a few contracts on the agenda for renewal for next year uh, that are also included in the budget. Uh, we have a, our contract with Effective School Solutions, which is a contract for services, uh, clinicians for mental health and uh, behavioral and also uh, professional development for staff. Uh, so we will be continuing all the services that we currently have in place now. We have added to those uh, this year and those have been incorporated into next year's budget. Uh, we also have a renewal for the YMCA before and after care renewal uh, that is on the agenda. And that is under a proposal that was submitted a few years ago by the YMCA and we're able to renew it uh, under those terms. Uh, we have a award for a food service management company on contract. Uh, we did go out for proposals this year. Uh, so the contract is being awarded to Winston's Nutrition, that's our current food service uh, management company. Uh, and that will be for next year and there are four optional renewals. Uh, we are also renewing a contract with educational staff and services for the supply of substitutes uh, for the district. And that is, again, uh, per a proposal we received a few years ago that this will be a renewal. Uh, we also have a uh, contract on the agenda for uh, school pictures and yearbook for the high school level uh, with boards. We have had a lot of discussion about uh, Lures and we've got some feedback uh, through a survey uh, on some of the things that parents wish to have addressed and we've shared those and had conversations with boards and they've committed to addressing those concerns and also doing their own survey of parents to get even more direct feedback uh, to make the services better for next year. I do just want to remind everybody that this is a service that's provided by the district uh, that parents can elect to use. Uh, so we, we hope that um, everybody understands that you know, they have their choice of photo packages and they also, uh, if they choose not to use the school doctor, they have the ability to do that also. But we, are, we do strive to uh, have you know, the best product that we that we're going to provide and we are going to continue to do that. Uh, we also talked about a few other things. Uh, we informed the committee that uh, happily we were awarded the local recreation improvement grant that we applied for to renovate the Harmony Elementary School playground. We did apply for $100,000. We were awarded $69,000. And we are going to be using those funds to uh, renovate the playground there over at Harmony with some funds that are included in our local budget. Uh, we also talked to the committee about our plans to apply for another uh, COPS security grant, the school violence uh, protection program grant. We did receive a grant last year nationally, which is pretty sizable. We received a grant of almost a half a million dollars to fund uh, where we're do, we doing access controls throughout the districts and we'll have a project that will be ongoing. Uh, we have been told it's difficult to get the grant two years in a row because it is highly competitive, but we do feel that we have some 
uh, items to submit that would be strong, uh, strong candidates for funding, so we are going to try, but again, we have been told it may not be successful, but we, we are going to try to get those funds again. Uh, and that was, that concluded our meeting. And you had a few um, questions. Could you please um, tell the community why we have chosen parking for that playground? Because there's stipulations for that grant? Sure. So the local, that, that's a good point. This grant, the Local Recreation Improvement Grant, is they are looking for projects that will impact uh, the community as a whole. And we felt that this that particular playground was a great candidate because of its location next to the community athletic fields that are at Thorne and Barney. And it's not only used by the children who attend those schools, but it's used by children from all over town when they come and play on those fields. So we thought that that would be a strong contender because it is a very competitive grant uh, to be able to make a case for a big impact on the community. So that's, and, and to be honest, the playground equipment is aging and it does need to be replaced. So that's, that's part of it as well. But the location of the playground, we thought made it a good contender. And I think we were right since we did it when. And the other question is, could you please update on our conversation on the bus for Fort Lauderdale? Because we did discuss that in the committee. We discussed, so we've been discussing uh, over the past couple of months, uh, we had uh, busing that is currently in place for students who uh, formerly attended Fort Mons School that were moved to New Mons School. Um, that area of uh, Fort Mons, you know, that would be not eligible for busing under the uh, policy and the regulations from the state, which uh, state that if a student is more than two miles remote from the school, they are eligible based on mileage, but we have a, a number of students who don't qualify based on mileage. And when Fort Mom's school was closed a few years ago, there was a temporary accommodation made to provide transportation for the students who lived in that area. Uh, so we talked about you know, reviewing uh, that accommodation and letters were sent out to the families done the busing now for a few years and that we would be looking to discontinue the busing uh, next year for the, for the families who don't qualify based on mileage. Uh, we have heard concerns from the parents and we have been discussing that as an administrative team and uh, in our facilities and finance committee. Uh, we've tried to look at different options uh, that people have suggested. Uh, so we've had parents come to the board meeting here and say, you know, I can see Harmony, you know, I, I you would know, like to walk to Harmony instead of Mammoth. Uh, and uh, we've looked at this from all different angles. Uh, unfortunately, without doing a, a wider range redistricting or re redrawing the lines of the elementary schools, you know, doing pocket moves of, of students to other schools is, 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 would be too disruptive. So at this point, you know, we are evaluating you know, whether we could continue the busing uh, for one more year and take another year to, this, you know, to see what other alternatives may be available or how we could solve this issue going forward. Um, there wouldn't be any uh, item on the agenda for that this evening. Uh, the, the only way this would show up on agenda is when we renew our transportation routes, uh, our contracts next year. We have new bids on the agenda for this month, but our renewals won't happen until next month. So when we put the renewals on the agenda for next month, you know, we would, uh, the board would decide you know, whether that would, that route would be renewed with the rest of the routes that we do. So I hope that's understandable to everybody where we're at at this point. It's a difficult situation, um, and we have to try to figure out a long-term solution. Okay. Yes, sir. Moving on to shared services, Ms. Star. So our shared services uh, representatives uh, met with the township representatives for shared services on April 18th. A few topics were discussed, mostly focused on facilities, particularly outside facilities. Uh, we had had an issue over the past month with some of the field lighting at High School South Baseball Field. Uh, for those who may 
not be familiar with the history of that. Those lanes were installed by the township uh, to light the baseball field over the high school cell. In return, uh, we do allow them to uh, issue some permits for the use of that field, but it does benefit us to have the lights there. The township has uh, arranged for did arrange for repairs, uh, and everything has been taken care of at this point. Uh, we've also had an ongoing discussion about the fields at Bayview School. They are heavily used by community groups, and uh, they are uh, they are in need of improvement. Uh, so we are we've been discussing with the township ways that we could possibly improve the condition of those fields. Uh, I know the subject of irrigation was discussed. Perhaps trying to find a way to install irrigation to allow the grass to grow better over there. But really the issue is, is heavy use and without a way to, we need to find a way to rest those fields at some point so that they can rejuvenate themselves. Thank you, Ms. Darby. We'll go to policy, Mr. Kirkpatrick. Good evening. The, uh, the policy committee held its last meeting on April 18th. Tonight on the agenda, you will find that there is a policy and a regulation that are both being abolished. There are nine policies that are on the agenda for a first read. There is a policy that's going to be adopted tonight, second read. And there are four regulations that are on the agenda as well for adoption. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll open up the microphone for a public comment on agenda items only. We have a comment to make for agenda item only. Good evening. Uh, a little loud, sorry. Um, I just have a couple questions. Number one. I'm sorry, could you just state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Who's that? Who's that? Is that the one all the way at the end of it? Mallory, was that your name? My name is Amy. Yeah, your last name, maybe I can see it from where I was standing. Sit. Darby. Darby, okay. My name is Victoria Bina. Victor Bina, however you want to pronounce it. Just your address, I'm sorry. 32 meals in four months. Um, I just have a quick question. Are you guys done with the uh, actually voting in the budget already? Or I didn't see everybody voting in. Was everybody in on that? Correct. It's final already? Done. Shocking how fast 250 something thousand is delegated to a job that not the script. I don't even know what these people are going to be doing. It's actually three positions, not one. Okay. What are these people actually doing? 256,000 3D. Is that pretty close to what we just stated? This moves so quickly, I'm actually in shock. You guys are operating like a business. I want you to succeed. I want you guys to succeed. We're actually, actually, while I was sitting outside, I found out that you're doing this for free. None of you guys are getting paid for what you're doing. I'm actually impressed, actually. And that is why. I, I want you guys to actually succeed at what you're doing. If you're actually volunteering for this, I'm impressed. I'm just a little bit in shock at how fast the money was just like, just evaporating without really, and just how fast the, the motion went down without actually explaining what these people are going to be doing. And I'll just give you a personal example. My daughter goes to uh, New Mom. She uh, recently stated that she has four teachers. I would like to know what these four teachers are doing for a class of 19 or 20 students. Do we need four teachers for 20 students? One other question, and I know you guys are handling the budget, and I hope and pray to God that we could possibly recalibrate this or even pulled off on this final vote. With, I've been on the screen over there. This happened so quickly, I was actually a little bit in shock and nobody even stood up the same thing. But the final was supposed to be going until May. What? What's the, uh, what's the deadline for the actual final the agreement? Can somebody answer that? It was on the screen before. The timeline that was included on the last slide 
was the statutory allotment for the dates that you could hold your public hearing. So okay. the dates were April 24th through, it was May 1st or 2nd. Okay. So being that this is April 25th, we are within that time. Great. Now, I would like to know, I pick one school, pick one of the uh, 11 schools you guys have in this district. I would like to know on a spreadsheet just what each person does, how long they've been there, how much they get paid, and what exactly their job is. And perhaps we can just analyze one of those schools and see how, how much waste there is, if any, if we can identify some of the things we can all look at a lot of experience as restructuring companies. I would like to help you if I can. If you guys are volunteering, I don't want to volunteer. I want to help you do that. I want to set an example. I want you guys to set an example. I think we can do better. I was a little bit shocked at how fast that money was delegated without, I don't even know what these people are going to be doing. I know that this job's already current. You said that question, some of the money was being used from sort of a grant to pay them before or something. Is that what you said? The money was coming from a grant or something? Or where was the money coming from for these positions that we're not paying for? Sir, generally, the, this is not a back and forth where the board gets interrogated. It's I'm not a public now, like Usually, it's just time for public comment. I know you might not have been at previous meetings, but there was a budget presentation at the last meeting in preparation of the budget. It's a year-long process. There's finance committee meetings throughout the year. So your impression that this all happens in one minute might not understand the whole process. So I just want to make sure you understand that this is not just something that happens really early at a meeting that there was a budget presentation tonight, there was a budget presentation at the last meeting, there's finance committees throughout the year, and Ms. Doherty works on the budget all year long. Okay. I'm sorry for uh, uh, singling out Ms. Doherty over there. That's probably, that's why I this is going in the wrong direction. I was at the last meeting. You guys voted on some things that, some letters, numbers, I, I don't know what that was. Some of the people would like to know a little bit more information. And I get it, probably going to say, oh, you can look it up on the website. No, no, I, sorry, I wouldn't say that at all. There actually was a public comment on the budget, both at the last meeting and this meeting. That would have been the time to ask the questions. OK. So we, let me ask you a question. Because that time has passed, has already this been chiseled in the stone? Can changes be made? I'll leave that question to the story. You're welcome, you're welcome to ask questions about the budget now, since you missed the, the previous time. But if you have questions about the budget, you're free to ask. Them. I personally think that the 250 something thousand need to be allocated for better transportation for the kids. That's just my opinion. I mean, you know, I would just like to know what these people are going to be doing for that 256,000, whatever that was on the screen before. What is their exact job? Why are we spending so much money for three positions? Can somebody answer that, or is this something that happens at another meeting? We can't discuss personnel issues. That's the problem right now. Say it again. We can't discuss personnel issues. Personnel issues, yes. We don't even know how many people are working. For just, a, just a one second. I'm sorry. Okay, you're right. You have one more minute left. I just have to. Okay. Guys, again, to recap, I'm sorry, it's a little loud. A little bit shocked at how fast this went down. For me, I've only been here for the last two meetings, you're right. But I just saw a quarter million dollars disappear in a matter of seconds. I think we can do better than that. I'll end with that. Thank you. Would anyone else like to make a public comment on gender and adult? Please state your name, address the record. Alan Burns, 28 Todd Drive. I'd like to agree with this gentleman here. Um, Joan disagreed with uh, adding supervisors to uh, supervisors to the payroll, but she voted yes for it, so I have conflict with that. But then you guys went back and talked about transportation, that we can't give kids transportation, but we can give more jobs. What what burden is that leaving on kids and stuff? You know, I mean, you know, getting them to school and stuff. So I kind of think you guys should kind of revisit that a little bit. That just doesn't make sense to me. I think kids need to get to school. I think parents. I think parents are being taxed too much. I think. Uh, I think parents are being taxed too much. Uh, I think there's you know the, the the stress of getting to school and all that stuff, and we just we 
became, we're giving more supervisor administration, and I hate to say, Joan, you were right, but you voted for it. So I, I have a problem with that. You know, and I agree with this gentleman here. Like, why are we adding more jobs to the payroll when we should be giving kids transportation? So I'm, I'm sorry, but just, are you speaking for Fort Mouth? No, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as a, a taxpayer in Middletown. I, I, I've lived in 28 Tower Drive and, and Red Bank and, 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 and this section, and, and we have a board member that disagrees with it. We have a couple board members disagree with it, and we're adding more jobs, but I don't think we need to do that at the moment. If anything, give the teachers a raise, why are we adding more supervisor positions? And give a raise and give a raise and, and give transportation, but let's add more supervisors. We need that. That means it's going well. I voted, I, I would have voted no for the budget, but we need every dollar we can because of all the state aid. We're not, I don't want anything else cut from the budget, but I'm not done arguing that I don't want those supervisors in. The vote, the, the supervisors, from what I'm told, are not set in stone in the budget. Well, how would you go against your conviction? Because I don't. I don't want to take any money away from our kids. I'm hoping that there's a way to Listen, we're looking, we're working on the transportation. But as far as the budget goes, if I vote no and five other people vote no, then the kids lose out. I will not let the kids lose out. I will fight for my beliefs at every single meeting, which I do. If you come to meetings, you will know. I'm well, very outspoken. But I'm willing to come to meetings. I'm willing to get involved. There's a lot of stuff going on with the board right now that I, as a taxpayer, am not, I'm not happy with. So I'll be here. And if you want me here, I'll be here. And I'll, I'll, I'll put my first line. But you have to take a stand. And your stand is not right. You, you, you're against, you're against me, you're against getting your supervisors. But then all of a sudden you turn around and you vote for it. Why do you do that? That's your opinion. You might not understand how the budget works. Okay, I, 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 okay, listen, can I jump in now and just remind, can, can I just remind the public that all comments should be addressed to the presiding officer. It's not a back and forth with any individual board member. So I, I just, she was responding to your question, but then it turned into a conversation between, so, okay, thank, thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to make a public comment on the gender handle? Yeah, I'll just say
I didn't call my supervisor for a couple of days, and my wife still called in for me. I was too sick. They said she couldn't make the call for me, and I was unable to do it myself. I don't think I should be fired because of an illness. I am one. I'm not an employee on the 8512. I'm a person. My wife and my daughter are disabled and relying on me. We need the health coverage and the financial the financials. We will lose out of the house and everything I have built on and worked on so hard for. Um, just remember, my life is in your hands before you vote today. And I work here, and I love my job because I love to help people. I never ask for anything in turn, but today I'm asking for your help. And please. Think hard before you vote. Thanks. That's it. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you for your comment. And the, the board doesn't discuss personnel matters, so I don't want you to think we're ignoring your comment by not responding. I just want to just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like make a public comment on gender identity? See, so, you know, comes the mic and calls public portion for comment. A couple of proclamations, Administrative Professions Day is tomorrow, um, National School Principal Day, May 1st, National Teachers Appreciation Day, May 2nd, and approval of School Nurses Day, May 10th. I have a motion to approve Executive Session 328-23 and the workshop for the voting meeting 328-23. So moved to second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Just to get into my report right now, just let everybody know, I would like to report that, and it's been said, the Port Mahomet bus route will be reinstated for next year, and on the agenda for next month, along with the rest of the district's routes, okay? And I will say on my personal behalf, I am all for keeping the route indefinitely, because I do believe that children should have a way to get to school. Just a couple of days of recognition which I just went through. I wanted to say again, 426 tomorrow, Administrative Professions Day, May 1st, National School Principal Day, May 2nd, National Teachers Appreciation Day, and May 10th, School Nurses Day. Thank you all for everything that you do each and every day for our children. Moving on to Amy, the Board Secretary's monthly certification. We have certification that pursuant to New Jersey Administrative Code, I, as the board secretary, certify that as of March 31st, 2023, no one have any time as encumbrances and expenditures, which in total exceed the line of appropriation. Thank you, Amy. Okay, the motion to approve C1 through D1. C1 through C3. Oh, all right, C1 through C3, I'm sorry. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. I need a motion to approve D2 minus numbers 403, 527, and 155. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a guest on all except 24417. Abstentions. I need a motion to confirm D2403, 527, and 155. So, sorry. And you can have a roll call on each one. Can we have a discussion? Yes. I just want to say, I always vote no on hips. We never really get the full um, picture, but tonight we had a full picture on three. And we got more information that backed up the decisions. 
so my vote will probably be changed from now. Any a roll call on 403 first? Mrs. Caminiti? Yes. Mrs. Farley? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Hackman? I couldn't hear that. Okay. Mrs. Minnies? Yes. Mr. Tull? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mrs. Tobacco? Yes. Mr. Capone? Yes. Roll call 527. Mrs. Caminiti? Yes. Mrs. Farley? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Heffernan? Yes. Mrs. Minnies? No. Mr. Tull? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mrs. Tobacco? Yes. Mr. Capone? Yes. A roll call on 155. Mrs. Caminiti? Yes. Mrs. Farley? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? No. Mr. Heffernan? Same. Mrs. Minnies? Yes. Mr. Tull? No. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mrs. Tobacco? Yes. Mr. Capone? Yes. Motion to approve D3 through 5. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion to approve 15B1 through F4. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. And that was including, I need to motion to approve. That was 14B2, addendum. Motion to approve. Yes. You did. I can't hear you You did through four, right? D four. Did you do the same I did B one through F four just now. Now I'm doing the addendum, which is fifteen B two. What about F five? F five, not yet. Oh. Okay. So motion to approve addendum fifteen B two. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Now we have a motion to approve 15 F5 through G1. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. A motion to approve items. One for fifteen on personnel Yes, I as well. On no, number eight. So all in 
number four and over for number eight. Yeah. Yeah, same here. On oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify. So, no for number eight is Mrs. Tobacco, Mrs. Farley, Mrs. Ray, Mrs. Minnie Mr. Hackerman, Mr. Tull, and Mr. Fitzgerald. I think it was everyone. Okay, I'm sorry, it's difficult for me to hear because if you're not talking into the mic. Yeah, I, I think it was everyone. Okay. Sorry for confusion, everyone. Moving on to old business before we get to old business. Kalita, Liam, do you want to have anything to say? Sure. Oh, uh, yeah, go there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Have a good night, everyone.